Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my studio. I've been doing a series about the different shooting modes on your camera and today we're going to talk about aperture priority. Now, what is aperture priority? Well, first of all, how to get to it. It's going to be on your camera on a command dial, either A or AV, some are AP. It's going to be on a menu somewhere on your camera that you can get to. You're going to see auto intelligent auto um, you're going to see program mode you're going to be, see shutter priority and you're going to see aperture priority today's video we're talking about aperture priority so what is it what does it do aperture priority allows you to set the aperture that you want your camera to shoot at that's how big or how small the opening is for the lens and the camera will work around that and try setting the shutter speed accordingly and if you allow it the ISO accordingly to get you the best exposure. So that's what aperture priority is. Similar to shutter priority, but shutter priority, you set the shutter speed, the camera sets the other stuff. And aperture priority, you set the aperture and it will set the shutter speed and if you allow it, the ISO. Now, some cameras or some people have taken their cameras off of auto ISO. I actually recommend it. And so you're going to limit what the camera can set to get you the correct exposure. In aperture priority, the camera generally has more room to maneuver to get you a better exposure than in shutter priority. But the issue is in aperture priority, if you haven't allowed it to set the correct ISO and you've set the ISO, it may take the shutter speed down too slow for you to get a good sharp picture by hand holding it. So beware of that. There are issues when using different modes. They have benefits. They have a lot of benefits and there's a lot of good things that they do, but there can be issues if you tell the camera to do something that it cannot do. So just be careful with that. Now, Let's explain really quickly about exposure. How does a camera set the exposure? Depending upon what mode you're in, the camera sets your shutter speed, it sets the aperture, and or it will set the ISO. That's the three things that a camera can control or you can control to get a good exposure for taking a picture. If you've taken away one or two of those things, your camera is then limited in what it can do. And that's one of the problems in using aperture priority. If you just allow it to set the shutter speed, you may be causing issues. So again, I've said it enough times. I hope you got it. It's one of these areas that people will go in. They'll try it'll work good for three or four shots. And then all of a sudden it starts to work bad and they don't understand that they've <laughs> lucked out in the previous shots by setting the correct ISO, setting the correct aperture. And then the camera has just had the perfect range to work with then they move into a different situation darker or lighter generally darker and the camera just cannot set that correct exposure so again beware what does it do uh, setting your aperture allows you to determine what the depth of field is in your image so what's the depth of field well i've already talked about that in the previous video Go back and take a look at it. Google it here on YouTube or search it on YouTube and look it up and it'll tell you your depth of field is how much before and after where you focus will look in focus. A narrow depth of field will be very little. A major depth of field will be lots. A little depth of field looks good when you're doing a portrait of somebody. You focus on their eye and the background is out of focus looks really good. Um, if you're doing a group of people, same thing. You can take the people's picture. They look in focus. They look perfectly exposed. Everything looks good. The background can be out of focus. So it brings your attention more to your subject. That's what your depth of field is. If you want more depth of field, if you want more in focus, you can go with a deeper depth of field, a wider depth of field. And that allows more to be in focus. So let's say you're photographing a waterfall. And you want the mountain behind the waterfall also to be in focus. You can go with a deeper depth of field. So you'd go with a higher number, 24, 32, 64 if your lens has it. And that gets more in focus. So that's what your depth of field is. That's what your aperture is setting. Now, why would you use this setting? Well, it's one of the settings I use a lot for one thing specifically. And that is when I'm shooting with my 150 to 600 lens, I know that the perfect 
aperture for that lens is f9. If I go any faster, any lower of a number, the pictures are not as sharp. So I like it to be f9. Even a little bit higher would be okay, but f9 is the minimum. So I will set my camera that has my big lens on it to f9. I will then set my ISO usually to 400 or 800, depending upon the lighting situation, maybe higher. And then I let the shutter speed go up and down as it will. I don't want it to go too slow. It can go higher. I don't mind, but I don't want it to go too slow. So if it is going too slow, I increase my ISO. But the great thing about it is, is that my aperture is always at the ideal location. It's not dropping down to f6 or f7. It's not dropping down to 5.6. It's not moving at all off of that f9. And that's where I like it. Now, I also use it in other situations. I use it when I'm photographing groups. I don't want a shallow depth of field in a lot of cases. If it's a one person, not a big deal. Two people, no, nah, it can go a little bit more. Three or four or five people, different rows. I know I want more of a depth of field. So in those situations, I'll tell the camera, look, I know what I've got. I want a bigger depth of field. I set my aperture accordingly. Maybe it's F11, maybe it's F16. And then I go out and I take my picture. It'll change the shutter speed accordingly. I watch it so it's not too slow. And I'm comfortable that I'm getting the picture that I like. Now, honestly, how much do I use aperture priority in my day-to-day -day work I would say probably with taking that 150 to 600 lens out of the equation I would probably say less than five percent of the time it's not a mode that I use a lot I use program mode a lot I use shutter priority a lot I use manual a lot aperture priority is probably the least of all of those that I use but it does have its advantages and it does work. So try it, see what you think. As I always tell people, don't try it if it's important pictures, try it in a test situation first, play around with it in different situations, see what you think and then go from there. We'll talk to you next time. Get out there, take some amazing pictures and enjoy doing it. Bye-bye now.